Hello and welcome back to another episode of Wild Kitchen presented by Moultrie Mobile. In this video, we're making homemade jalapeno cheddar venison brats that are perfect for the 4th of July or grilling all summer long. Making homemade brats isn't as hard as it would seem and we're going to go through it step by step. First, we're going to need to grind up our meat for the brats. I want these brats to have a lot of fat and a lot of juice, so I prefer to do a 3 to 2 ratio of venison to pork butt. This means we'll need 3 pounds of ground venison and 2 pounds of ground pork. We'll need to cut the venison and pork butt into cubes or slices small enough for our meat grinder to handle. We'll place them on a baking sheet and set them in the freezer to chill for 30 to 60 minutes along with the meat grinder and parts. I only had to do this for the pork butt because I already have 3 pounds of ground venison in my freezer ready to go waiting for a recipe like this. While the meat's in the freezer, we can mix together our spices. We'll need one and a half tablespoons each of smoked paprika and kosher salt, a tablespoon of sugar, two teaspoons of black pepper, and a teaspoon each of coriander and mustard powder. Okay, now our meat is chilled, so we're ready to get out our meat grinder. We'll just take the pork chunks and the venison chunks, if you also need to do your venison, and run the meat through the grinder and let it pour out into a big container. I'm also going to send my pre-ground venison through the grinder a second time just for a finer texture, but that part is completely optional. Once all the meat is ground, we can start adding in our ingredients for the brats. Just to reiterate, we are doing 3 pounds of ground venison and 2 pounds of ground pork butt. To that, I'm going to add 1 cup of finely diced onion, a cup of diced jalapenos, a cup of high temperature cheddar cheese, and 3 tablespoons of minced garlic. Then we can start mixing that up and as we mix it, we'll slowly add in our seasoning mixtures we mixed before and a half cup of cold beer. I don't have a meat mixer so I'm just using my hands and once the ingredients are completely mixed and we used up all the seasoning and the beer, the mixture should be sticky. Now we can get out our sausage stuffing machine and stuff our brat mixer into the housing. Lucky for me, my sausage stuffer and hopefully yours too fits exactly 5 pounds of meat. Then we'll bring the meat down to the tip of the stuffing tube. Then we can slide the open end of a soaked and rinsed hog casing onto the tube. I like to first dip the casing a couple times in the water, then start feeding it onto the tube. Once we've reached the last couple inches of the casing, we'll tie a knot to secure the end. Now we can start slowly feeding a small amount of meat into the tube. Once the brat is about 5 to 6 inches, we can pinch to separate and then twist it a few times. We'll continue this process until we run out of casing, but it's important that we alternate twisting either direction, either away from us or towards us, every time we make a link. Alternating twisting helps secure the links and also helps prevent them from unraveling, so it's very important that we do this. Once you've reached the end of your casing, tie a knot to secure the end. As you finish stuffing the sausage links, place them onto a wire rack to let them start drying out. They need to dry out for 30 minutes or up to overnight. I like to do them overnight just to separate all the work. Once they're dry, we'll snip the ends of the casings on both sides of our brats. Now our brats are ready for the grill. If you don't want to make all of them, stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to go over how to freeze them properly. But first, we're going to tackle the grilling section. We're going to need to heat our grill to medium-low heat, which falls between 300 and 350 degrees. Once it's preheated, we can place our brats directly onto the grill gates and let them grill until they're cooked to 165 degrees. This will take about 20 to 25 minutes. As they cook, we're going to want to rotate them every 5 minutes or so to ensure that they cook evenly. It's important to watch the internal temperature closely to avoid overcooking. Overcooking will dry them out, and that's the last thing we want with these brats. Once they've reached a safe internal cooking temperature, we can remove them from the grill, and we're ready to serve. We're going to have to let them sit out for about 1-2 to two minutes prior to serving them, though. These brats are packed with flavor and fresh ingredients, so they're great by themselves, but I like to serve them on a bun with your favorite toppings and condiments. My favorite way to serve them is on a bun with diced onions, mustard, and jalapenos over top. These jalapeno brats are so great, and if you're not making them for a crowd and want to freeze some of them, this is the perfect amount to last you all summer. The best way I've found to freeze the brats is by first wrapping them in parchment paper and then in a layer of freezer paper. Then just label them and use them within three months. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more wild game recipes.